What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was another crazy busy week for Apple. So we had multiple software releases and product releases. So on Monday, Apple released the final public version of iOS 15.1, along with macOS Monterey, and all of the other, you know, watchOS, tvOS, and HomePod OS software versions. And then on Tuesday, we got some new products. So Apple dropped the AirPods 3 and the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros, which come with the insanely powerful M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. And then on Wednesday, Apple pushed out iOS 15.2 beta one to register developers with the public beta coming the next day on Thursday. And also on Thursday, we got Apple's Q4 2021 earnings, which actually missed expectations for the first time since 2016 due to the shortages. But anyways, in this video, of course, we're talking all about iOS 15.1 and iOS 15.2 beta one. So we're going to talk about some additional changes. We're going to talk about the performance, the battery life. We're going to take a look at the community poll to see what you guys had to say and more. All right. So let's start off by talking about some additional new features and changes found in iOS 15.2 beta one. So of course, the big thing that came with iOS 15.2 is inside of the privacy section and down to app privacy report, we now have this whole new UI right here, where you can see, you know, when applications are accessing certain parts of your phone, like your contacts, your photos, your microphone, whatever the case may be. So that was the big feature in iOS 15.2 beta one, but there are some additional things as well. And the first one actually has to do with the scheduled summaries. So this is what the new scheduled summary looks like inside of the notification center. I was actually not able to reproduce this myself. So some people are seeing this, some are not, some are seeing the same old style like I am. When I go into my control center and I see it, you can see it just shows up like that even when I have multiple applications in there. But some people are seeing that brand new schedule summary UI. Now we also have a minor change inside of the news application. So if you go into news, you will see that now when you have a channel blocked, it actually grays out the image right there. It grays out the article, but it doesn't actually, you know, completely stop you from seeing the headline in the picture. So just for example, I'll show you guys what it looks like on iOS 15.1. So I have 15.1 over here on the left hand side. And when you have something blocked, this is what it looked like. So it just said that it was blocked and you could show it anyway. So just a minor change. And I actually prefer how it was on iOS 15.1 instead of how it is in iOS 15.2, because in 15.1, it actually blocks the story. Whereas in 15.2, it kind of just shows you it, but it grays it out. So if I don't want to see something from that channel, I don't want to see it. So I wish Apple would revert back to the old way because I liked how I just completely removed it from my timeline there with news. We also get a minor change inside of the stocks application. So you can see up in the top right, we used to have an edit button. And when you would press on that, you would just have this view right here. But now in 15.2, when you press on these little ellipses, these little three dots right there, you can see you now get a pop-up that says to edit watch list or to show currency. And then when you tap on edit watch list, it goes into this view like we saw on 15.1. So just a very minor change there in stocks. Also inside of the app store, Apple just recently launched live events. So now applications can have live events. Like if they're doing some kind of promotion, you can see right here, like this one is a special event for Halloween from the application rise of kingdoms. So Apple's going to start showing these live events now on the today view, which is pretty cool. We also get a new feature on iPad OS 15.2. So if we go into an application here and we want to go into split view, if we tap the three dots up here, take a look at that. We can now choose which side we want the windows to go on. So if I wanted to go over to the right, I could do it right there and then choose my next application. You can see right there, or I could do, you know, into the left side and you can kind of just switch like that from this view now. So pretty cool new change there on the iPad. But as far as any other features go, that's pretty much all I found so far on 15.2 beta one. Again, the main thing is going to be the app privacy report. And then we did also have some changes to emergency SOS with the verbiage in there. And also the countdown was changed from either three or five seconds to eight seconds. So now the countdown is a lot longer for emergency SOS. I'm sure that a lot of people accidentally called, you know, the police when they didn't mean to or emergency services when they did not mean to. So Apple changed that to eight seconds, which is nice. And, you know, I'm sure we will see more features and changes as the time goes on. We're only in the first beta right now. So we could even see new emoji and new wallpapers 
later on. Now, I did also want to mention that SharePlay was added to macOS Monterey. So macOS Monterey 12.1 beta was also released this week, and that did introduce SharePlay. So that was not available on the initial release of macOS Monterey, but now it is in beta for you beta testers. But we still don't have any word on universal control, which is probably the most anticipated feature of all. Now, as far as bugs go, I have been facing a few bugs. As you can see right here, I have a major bug with the Spotlight search. Every time I search for something in spotlight you can see the maps application right there but when I search for maps nothing pops up the application does not pop up and I faced that multiple times it fixes itself after a reboot but then it just comes back so I'm having major issues with the spotlight search here in 15.2 beta 1. Now I'm also having issues with Wi-Fi connectivity and mainly Wi-Fi speeds. So I noticed that my Wi-Fi speeds were really slow when I was trying to download certain applications and just doing things on my phone. And then I decided to run some speed tests and compare it to 15.1. And sure enough, iOS 15.2 beta 1 just gets lower speeds every single time I do a speed test connected to the same server, same Wi-Fi. These are both the iPhone 13 Pro. So there's really no other explanation other than the fact that this is on iOS 15.2 beta 1 and my main phone right here is on 15.1. So Wi-Fi speeds could also be an issue for you on these 15.2 betas. But aside from those two things, everything's been pretty good so far on 15.2 beta 1. I really don't have too much to complain about. If I go ahead and look at my Geekbench scores right here, I'm just going to run a fresh one real quick here on 15.2 beta 1 and see how it compares to when I first installed it. But overall, performance is fine. I mean, it's really no different, in my opinion, than iOS 15.1, aside from, once again, those bugs that I'm facing now, which is expected on a first beta, just a beta in general. All right, so you can see we got a 1740 on the single core and a 4817 on the multi-core so slightly lower actually than my initial run but so far again performance has been fine feels about the same as 15.1 to me but as far as battery life goes i have actually noticed that battery life has taken a hit here with 15.2 beta 1 it's definitely not as good as ios 15.1 it does seem to be draining a little bit faster than what i'm used to on 15.1 the latest stable release so that is one thing to keep in mind and then speaking of ios 15.1 I did also want to touch on this and give you guys an update on how this has been running because that's what I'm running on my main device, my iPhone. 13 Pro. I am also running it here on the iPhone 13, and it's actually been really good so far. So iOS 15.1 seems to solve a lot of issues that we had on iOS 15 through 15.0.2. A lot of the bugs that we were facing early on have been fixed, and the only issue I still have, I have a couple of them, but the main ones are that third-party applications are still having issues. So I'm not sure if these apps are just not fully updated yet for 15.1, but I'm mainly having issues with applications like Facebook. Facebook and also applications like Instagram and Discord. So those three applications in specific, I'm having issues with sometimes it'll just freeze up. Sometimes it'll be a blank screen and I won't be able to open up the application. You'll have to force close out of it. And then other times it works perfectly fine. So it seems to be an issue with third party apps and not necessarily 15.1, but that is one thing I wanted to mention. And then also I'm having issues with the files application as well. So files seems to be crashing a lot when I go to download an image and save it to my phone. And then also I sound like a broken record when I say this, but handoff to HomePod is still slow and freezes out my music application. So that is still also an issue in 15.1. And stay tuned for the community poll when I go over some of your guys' issues as well, because we will talk about some additional bugs and just overall experiences with 15.1. But as far as performance goes, it feels excellent. I mean, again, it feels the same as 15.2 beta 1 to me, just not really as many issues in terms of bugs as 15.2, but overall performance is great. And I think performance on 15.1 is definitely better than 15.0.2. I noticed a jump, you know, almost immediately, especially when we got on the RC build. So you should see an increase in performance and of course less bugs. And as far as the battery life goes, battery life is also really good on 15.1. It's definitely better than 15.2 beta one, and it's also better than what we had on 15.0.2. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to the community poll. So if you go over to my channel and go to the community tab right here, you will see the latest poll where I asked, what iOS version are you currently on and how is it running for you? So we got about 17,000 votes, Thank you to everybody who voted and about 150 comments. So thank you to everybody who commented as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and vote for what I'm using on my main device, which is iOS 15.1. And it's pretty great, no major issues. I definitely don't have bad batteries. So I'm gonna vote for the top one right there. And it looks like I am in the majority. So 67% are on 15.1 and say it's great with no major issues. And then second place is tied 
with 15.1 and it's not great bugs and bad battery life and then 12% are also on 15.0 or earlier still and then 7% are on 15.2 beta 1 and it's great and 2% are on 15.2 beta 1 and it's not great so it seems like a lot less people are updating to 15.2 that's probably because 15.1 just recently released and you know a lot of people are getting off the beta you know stages right now out the beta program right now so the majority of people are on 15.1 so let's go ahead and see what these comments are about so the first one is about 15.2 battery life which i did mention is not the greatest so 15.2 is dreading a lot in the background for me and it's so bad that i can't even get seven hours out of my 12 pro max stability is great though i did find it fixed a lot of bugs so that's good for the performance bad for the battery life there's a couple of features I haven't tested, but everything seems to be running good on my 11 Pro Max. So good to hear there. Nathan says he's on 15.1. I'm having some pretty major glitches with my AirPods Pros and HomePod Mini, especially with AirPods. I've never had so many issues with them. Ryan says that Bluetooth is definitely much slower to connect on both earbuds and in the car on 15.1. So seems like some people are having issues with Bluetooth. I have heard that as well. I can't necessarily say if that's happening to me or not. It feels about the same to me. John here says that he's on iOS 15.1 and he says the podcast application is still a wreck. It constantly forgets what podcasts I'm in the middle of and which ones I have queued up. So I agree. I've also had that issue with podcasts for quite a while now since iOS 15. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it is pretty annoying. Overlapping notifications sometimes appears in the notification center, specifically when trying to swipe to remove notifications on 15.1. So I have seen some people with that issue. I actually had that fixed in 15.1 for me. It has not come back since updating, but it seems like some people are still having that issue here on 15.1. So I would hope that that would be fixed pretty soon with the overlapping notifications. Battery has been unreal on my second day right now on 12 Pro Max, and I'm at 35%. So I'm assuming he's talking about 15.1 there because battery life on 15.1 does seem to be pretty good. We got some people on 14.8.1 still. So that was also a new update that came out for those that are still on iOS 14. Blake here is having issues on iOS 15.2 with overheating and dimming the screen since updating and that was not happening on 15.1 so pretty interesting there battery feels a bit worse on 15.1 but the nasty bug where my screen would freeze seems to be gone which is nice so interesting not too many people are saying the battery is worse on 15.1 but i'm glad i did fix your issue with the screen freezing while scanning documents and notes it crashes automatically and closes so pretty interesting bug there maybe something related to the same type of bug that we have with the files app where it will just crash when you pull up the camera or sometimes when you try to save an image or a document. So someone here has been having an issue with reminders since iOS 15. He says, hold reminder to mark it done. It goes away and comes back a second later. Doing it a second time clears it completely. So seems like a pretty annoying bug there for reminders. I don't use the app personally, so I cannot attest to that. Nathan's on 15.1 and says that he noticed some bugs. The amplified lock sound is back. So basically when you lock your phone, it's really loud. That is a bug some people have been having. And then also when you turn up volume using these side buttons, there's a lag on the AirPods. So maybe some issues there with 15.1 that could also be related to your Bluetooth, at least the second one. So again, somebody with an iPhone 10R having issues on 15.1 saying that the performance is dropping and also it lags pretty hard. And I'm sure he also has battery issues as well. So it seems like the iPhone 10R, for whatever reason, is having the most issues on iOS 15. At least they're the most vocal here in my comments. All right, so I'm just gonna read a couple more of these right here. iOS 15.1 iPhone 10R, everything is fine. That's good to hear from an iPhone 10R user, but there is a strange bug in WhatsApp where the top part of the application is cut off. One app has similar problem. So interesting, I don't use WhatsApp, but that may be an issue you guys could face on 15.1. 15.2 loses connection to wireless CarPlay on my Hyundai. So I have heard issues about the wireless CarPlay in general on 15.1 and 15.2. So not too surprising there. But anyways, thank you to everybody who did leave a comment and vote in this poll. I do appreciate it. Helps me get this information out to you guys and hopefully to Apple watching because of course we do submit feedback as well. If you guys are having issues, make sure you use the feedback application to report everything. Report all your bugs. Don't just leave a comment on them. Report them in the feedback app and then leave a comment on my poll letting me know the issues you're facing. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about what is next for Apple. So next week is the start of November. Wow, 2021 has flown by. So anyways, next week, November 1st is the Monday, and that is the week I think we will see iOS 15.2 beta 2. So Apple could always switch to a two-week cycle, but I think we are on a one-week cycle for 15.2. So I would expect to see 
a software release at 15.2 a beta 2 sometime next week maybe on tuesday or wednesday the second or the third there and then as far as the final public release of ios 15.2 i would not expect that until the end of November at the earliest, but I think that it's going to come sometime in early December. So either the first week of December or the second week right there, the week of the sixth or sometime maybe the first or the second of December right there. Now, of course, we could also see an iOS 15.1.1 come anytime, really anytime in November, we could see an iOS 15.1.1 if Apple finds a security vulnerability that needs to be patched up, or if there's just a major flaw in the software that Apple discovers later on, or hackers bring to their attention, then we will see a 15.1.1 get released. But that's pretty much what we're looking at right now. 15.2 beta 2 next week, and then we should see a weekly cycle until the final, which should come sometime around early December. But let me know what you guys think, and let me know what you guys are wanting to see with iOS 15.2. I know a lot of you guys want to see new emojis and new wallpapers, myself included. But yeah, guys, that was pretty much it. Just wanted to recap this week like I do every single Saturday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.